So I've been making videos with these little things for quite a while now, and they're great. They've gotten a lot better in the last few generations, but their microphones really haven't gotten all that good yet. So when I saw this little guy pop up over on B&H, I decided to give it a shot. This is the Rode VideoMic Me. I'm actually speaking into a Rode mic right now. It's the Rode Video Mic, the original Video Mic. I use the Rode Pen Mic quite a lot, so I'm a big fan of Rode products. So I thought I would go ahead and pick this one up. And basically, what this is, it's a microphone that you can attach to your phone or your tablet and use it to make videos. That's about all there is to it. Here's a list of some of the little features. Of course, designed for the iPhone and the iPad. Not going to be using it with those. It does have adjustable mounting hardware. It uses the headphone jack to do everything, so it should work on Android with no problems. And it does come with a windshield, which is Awesome. So let's just see what comes in this little package. We'll set it up. We'll give it a shot. So starting bottom to top, this looks to be the little mount that the microphone will actually fit into to help it fit onto the phone. Not sure how that's going to work. We'll find out here in just a minute, I suppose. We have what appears to be a, yeah, the quick start guide. And there you go. There's your parts information. So it does have the windscreen as the main body of the microphone itself. And then the adjustable mount. And one thing I didn't realize, it has a headphone output jack. So you can even monitor what it is that you're recording while you're recording it. I absolutely love that. And then just your traditional three and a half millimeter jack and your totally useful desiccant packet there. Do not eat that. And finally, of course, the microphone itself completely covered in its dead cat, whatever you want to call it. Just go ahead and pull that off. There you go. It's actually on there kind of tight. That's nice. But this is the microphone and I have to say it's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. And it should basically just fit kind of like this. They slide together and from what I would assume, it doesn't have to slide together to a, sp like it slides about to there before it starts putting any sort of pressure on. So if you wanted to use this with a phone, basically you would go ahead and plug this in, whichever direction you want it to go. I'm gonna point it toward myself at first, and then you kind of squeeze it together until it puts pressure on it, just light pressure. So it's putting a little bit of pressure on the back of the phone. It's holding the mic in place, because without that, the mic is just free to move about in whatever direction could actually be a good thing if you're doing sort of a back and forth interview situation, but I'd be willing to bet just touching the microphone and moving it is going to make a massive amount of noise, so not recommended. So do make sure you hold on to this little mounting clip, and it's really easy to just kind of slide on there, put it into place, and we're hooked up. We are ready to go at this point. Well, I'm going to be doing a couple of quick tests here on the LG G4 using the front-facing camera. Right now I'm using the built-in microphone, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to using the external Rode VideoMic Me. And this is the same setup standing here in my office, not really a whole lot of background noise, using the Rode VideoMic Me. So whenever I started recording, it popped up and said, recording with external microphone. And I can even tap it right there, and you should be able to hear it and not a whole lot of other sound. Another quick test here in our living room. I've actually got the TV playing in the background, so if I'm quiet for just a second, you can probably kind of hear that in the background. Here's the exact same setup. I'm standing in the living room again. The TV is still playing in the background. Let's see if you can hear it. All right, so let's see if that makes a difference. Again, we are using that Rode Video Mic Me. And here's a bit of a quick test video. This is from the front-facing camera on the iPad Air. The reason I'm doing this is because the Rode Video Mic Me was actually designed with eye devices in mind, and I don't have an iPhone to test with, so sorry about that. But I'm going to go ahead and switch over to using this now. And there we go. This should now be recording using the Rode Video Mic Me. We can sort of tap on it to let you hear that that is where it's actually coming from, where the audio is going into. So let me know if it sounds ridiculously better. And I'm going to do the same kind of test that I did with the LG G4, where basically I'm in the room with the TV, the TV is over there, so let's see how this sounds without the microphone. Microphone's in hand. And now we are using the Rode Video Mic Me just to see if you can hear a lot of stuff that's coming from behind me on the TV. I don't know if it'll make a difference or not. The, uh, the Video Mic Me on the LG G4 didn't appear to make a massive difference. And the Rode Video Mic Me actually comes with this windscreen, this dead cat, uh, which is supposed to block out a lot of wind noise. And we're out here, out in my backyard, where it's fall, so there's currently a little bit of a breeze. Kind of comes and goes, depending. So I'm, I'm making this clip a little bit longer so that the wind can kind of come through and I can turn around. There we go. There's a bit of a breeze coming in. That should be hitting the microphone pretty hard. So sorry if you can't hear me right now. And here we are doing the same test using the Rode Video Mic Me. Uh, I've got the windscreen on, the dead cat screen, so it should be blocking out a lot of the wind noise. There's a bit of a breeze coming in from this side now, and it's actually making the bristles on the, the screen f move just a little bit. I did some earlier testing with this, and it seemed to block out a lot of wind noise. So I'll be curious to see how this works out. There comes a pretty decent breeze, so I'll just sort of turn around as it's coming from this direction and see if it makes an effect. Yeah, it's definitely moving the, the fur on the screen an awful lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how, how this turns out. You'll have to let me know. 
So far, the sound isn't a huge amount different from the built-in mic, but if it can block out the wind noise, that could be a pretty decent little, little offering to have there. Yeah, there's a lot of wind coming through right now. You can see that moving in the wind a little bit there. So yeah, let me know what you think. Ooh, there comes a lot of breeze. So there we are with the windscreen on and the, the wind blowing against it quite a bit. And we'll have to see if that makes a difference, if it works properly, because you shouldn't be hearing any wind right now. Yeah, lots and lots of wind. All right, so I have been testing this device out over the last, I don't know, week and a half or so, and I wanted to go ahead and give you my thoughts and my impressions on it. I'm not gonna call it a full thorough review because honestly, I've had quite a few problems out of it that make it so that I can't really do a thorough review on it. First and foremost, I'm an Android user, which means that I have a bevy of Android devices to test this with. And unfortunately, it does not work with the grand majority of the Android devices that I've tested. Starting with the Nexus 5X, as I said in the very beginning of the video, the main point, the main reason that I was even interested in this was the Nexus 5X does some amazing video, but the audio is not amazing. So I wanted to put something like this on there to try to make it fantastic. Unfortunately, it just will not do it. I tried it out using the integrated camera app. I also tried it out using an app called Cinema FV5 and it did register that there was a microphone when I used Cinema FV5, but the app itself went kind of weird and buggy. It eventually ended up crashing out, but when it did work, the audio, well, it sounded kind of like this. Alrighty, here's a quick test using the Nexus 5X with the Rode VideoMic Me on it. You can kind of hear I'm tapping it again, and there you can probably hear the beeps and bloops and blops. It was filled with beeps and boops and blops and sounded just really weird in general. Sounded like it wasn't supposed to work. But I've tested it out with the OnePlus devices, I've tested it out with the Asus Zenfone 2, I've tested it out with a bunch of different tablets. I did get it to work with the Asus ZenPad 8S, which is an 8-inch tablet, which is not something I would want to film on. It obviously works on the iPad Air, because I showed you the clip from that earlier, and of course it works on the LG G4. Now that said, it does work surprisingly well on the LG G4, but comparing it to the audio quality of the built-in mics on the LG G4, it's not a huge improvement. I mean, you can tell me in the comments if you think it was a massive improvement from the earlier clips, but in my experience, it was not that much of a difference. The biggest place that it made a difference for me was when I was using it outdoors in wind, because it, this comes with a massive windscreen. So effectively, you take the sort of awkward walking around doing selfie video like this, and you put this onto it. So now you're walking around doing selfie video with a puff in your face. It's more than a little bit awkward. And of course, if you're doing it the other way, the way that it was kind of intended to be used as an interview mic it's not terrible I mean it's just a little bit awkward it's not necessarily something I think I would want to be roaming the halls of CES with but then again I have seen people at CES with iPads full-sized iPads on body mounts walking around holding them out to here using these body mounts so I guess it's not gonna be that out of place but overall my thoughts on the device this runs for about 60 bucks on Amazon B&H photo Adorama a bunch of sites like that and is it worth it it's not powered so it does give you a way to get slightly better audio on your device without having to actually expend any batteries or any potentially any charge on your device I don't know if this is making it take any extra charge or not probably about the same as wearing a pair of headphones because it doesn't say anything about needing phantom power and obviously your device is not going to be providing it. So that's a plus. The build quality feels very sturdy. However, I found out very quickly that just a slight turn on this, it actually unscrews entirely here in the middle. There's metal all over the inside here uh, and, and wiring, so it gets to be a little bit scary. So I would say maybe don't do that, but once you've got it screwed all together, it is very nice and very solid. This connection, the part that actually holds it onto the device and makes it steady, is a little bit awkward and inevitably it ends up coming together like this to where it's this piece of plastic is pressed right up against the three and a half millimeter jack which makes it impossible to stick to a device and it becomes very very difficult to pull this off from time to time so mechanically it's a bit awkward i think it would probably be better served if instead of being like this if it were a spring mechanism you know where it was constantly held on there and you just kind of sprung it in and out to do that but then again having it to where it completely removes means that you can actually install it on any device you just if it's going to be one that's facing like this you know where it's sticking into the side of the device you can't just install it without it because it'll just slide down like that so it's kind of hit or miss the audio quality like i said it is slightly improved you're only really going to notice it when you're wearing headphones though because i did test myself 
using the LG G4 with and without. Just using speakers, it was really, really hard to tell a difference at all. Using headphones, I could tell a bit of a difference. I mean, basically you're able to hear a lot more, even sound behind the microphone, but it is good quality sound. So for 60 bucks, is it worth it? It really depends on your use case. If you're the kind of person that is making videos with your cell phone on the regular, and you're finding that you have bad quality audio, specifically if you're doing videos outdoors where you're gonna be experiencing a lot of wind, it might be worth it for you. The biggest thing to keep in mind though is, will your phone support it? If you're using the Nexus 5X, the OnePlus 2, potentially the OnePlus 1, the OnePlus X, Asus Zen Phone 2, any of a variety of Android phones, it's probably not gonna work with them. I hate to say that, but that's the way it is. And I don't think it's this specific device, I think it's just three and a half millimeter microphones in general, because I've tested out lavalier mics on some of these as well, and they don't work. And I'm talking lavalier mics with this same TRRS plug on them. So I'm thinking it's just a design issue. If I had an iPhone to test with, I would love to show you the results from that, but I don't have one. Second time today I've said that I don't have an iPhone, weird. But as I was saying anyway, 60 bucks for this, I can say that it was not entirely worth it for me, but I can probably see myself using this from time to time. I do daily vlogs over on my second channel, and occasionally I will find myself using a phone to make the video, so having something like this where I can just kind of attach it to the phone and do this to make a front-facing selfie, that, that's not a bad option. But you do have to make sure that your phone has the 3.5 millimeter jack on the opposite end from wherever the camera is. Because if it's on the same end, like you would find with something like the OnePlus 2, you're gonna have microphone and potentially windscreen in the entire of the shot. It's gonna block a large portion of it. So I guess the big thing to say there is just do your research before you buy it, if you're planning to buy it. One, make sure your phone will work with a lavalier microphone or with any sort of three and a half millimeter microphone, not just pair of headphones with a microphone on them. Two, make sure that your phone has the camera on one end and the three and a half millimeter jack on the other, otherwise you're gonna have microphone in the shot, even if you're just using the microphone with no windscreen on it and three, make sure that you got 60 bucks to spend on it. But I think that's gonna be about all for me for today. I'm definitely gonna be hanging on to this because again, I can use it with the LG G4 and I can test it with new devices when they come out. So it is worthwhile for me at the end of the day. If it is for you, let me know down in the comment section below and let me know what you think of the sound quality out of this in the comments as well. Remember to leave a thumbs up below this video if you like this video. It lets me know that you like the video, that's it. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available and I'll see you again next time.